In this video, I'm going to be talking about matrix exponentiation, and I'm going to be using the Fibonacci numbers as an example. If you haven't seen my exponentiation by squaring video, you should probably see that one first. So matrix, matrix exponentiation is one of my favorite things because it's really powerful and it's surprising in the stuff that you can do with it. So it's basically exactly the same as exponentiation by squaring, except instead of taking a number to some power, you're taking a matrix to some power. So for instance, let's say x is some number, we're taking it to the eighth power, a is a matrix, we're taking it to the eighth power. We can do that the exact same way as we took x to the eighth power efficiently with by squaring it three times. We can do the same thing with a matrix, but every time there's a multiplication or a squaring, we're multiplying a matrix by a matrix instead of a number by a number. So this is a simple idea, but it's really powerful. Um, we're going to come back to matrices in a little bit. First, let's talk about Fibonacci numbers. So the Fibonacci numbers are a recurrence relation, which means that the terms are defined by previous terms. So f of n, which I'm going to say is the nth Fibonacci number, it's equal to the n minus 1th Fibonacci number plus the n minus 2th Fibonacci number. Just the last two added together. And because all the terms depend on each other, we need to provide some terms that are known. So I'm going to say f of 0 equals 1 is 0 and f of 1 equals 1. So now we can use that relationship and we can say, okay, f of 2 is going to equal f of 1 plus f of 0, which is going to be 1 plus 0, which equals 1, and so on. All right, so um, these Fibonacci numbers, what we're going to do is we're going to put them into a vector. So let's say we have a vector v, and it's going to equal f of n and f of n minus 1 as its two elements in this vector. And we're going to say we want to find a matrix A such that if we multiply the matrix A by V, we get out a new vector W where W equals F of N plus 1 and F of N. So let me go over that again. We put some Fibonacci numbers in a vector and we're going to try to find this matrix A so that if we multiply it by the vector it will give us a new vector that has the next Fibonacci number as the first element and then our previous Fibonacci number first element as the second element in this vector. Okay, so it's a little confusing but um, we'll do a little example. So this matrix A, it's going to have to be a 2 by 2 matrix, so it's going to have these four blank spots. And so this top row of the matrix, when multiplied by this vector, needs to give us the first element of W. So W, since it's f of n plus 1, that means that f of n plus 1, we know that's going to equal just from this equation up here we can say f of n plus 1 equals f of n plus f of n minus 1 right that's gonna be true so that means we want this to really be the sum of the first element and the second element in the other vector so we can do that by just putting a 1 in both spots in our matrix up here so we have 1 times this plus 1 times this and that is going to give us f of n plus 1. Now what about our bottom row? We want to multiply that by vector v and come out with f of n. Well since we already have f of n in the first element we can just put a 1 here and a 0 here. Alright so let's look at this a little bit. There's this matrix calculator on mathisfun.com uh, I suggest checking it out and you can I've put this matrix we just built right here and I've put our vector over here, our initial, initial vector. We're going to have f of 1 and f of 0. So if we multiply a by this vector that contains f of 1 and f of 0, it should come out with f of 2 and f of 1. So let's do it. There, 
it gave us our result 1-1 one, one, which is what we expected if I hit this button it will put that result up here let's multiply a by this new result we should now get the third Fibonacci number and the second Fibonacci number so it should be 2 1 and there we get it 2 1 and we can keep doing this as much as we want we get 3 2 we get 5 3 we get 8 5 and so on we can generate all the Fibonacci numbers this way but this is an inefficient way to generate the Fibonacci numbers because we're doing more work doing all these matrix calculations when we could just be adding the last two together again and again and again. The power of this comes when we use exponenti exponentiation by squaring on the matrix. So let me show you what I mean. Let me get rid of this. Um, so if we have a, if we have, so v, we already know what v is up here. It's f of n and f of n minus 1. Let's make a new, let's make a new element. We'll say z. We're going to say that z equals f of 1, f of 0. And so that's obviously 1, 0. Then a z is going to equal f of 2, f of 1. And a a z is going to equal f of 3, f of 2, and so on. So what we can see is that if we have a to the power of x minus 1 times z, then we're going to get f of x and f of x minus 1. So if we want to find the xth Fibonacci number, we need to take a to the x minus 1th power, which we can do very quickly and efficiently using exponentiation by squaring, and then multiply it by z, which is just our one zero matrix over here. And so this gives us a way to calculate Fibonacci numbers very quickly. We don't have to calculate all the Fibonacci numbers up to the one we're looking for. If we want to find the 100th Fibonacci number, we can square a a few times and do the algorithm to get the 36th, 36th power of a and then multiply it by one zero and it will give us the 37th Fibonacci number as the first element in our vector. We didn't need to calculate all the other Fibonacci numbers. That's what makes this so cool because it seems like we're skipping work. But really we're, we're just doing all the work in a much more efficient way. So I've written some code and this is also going to be, there's going to be a link in the description to this code if you want to play with it yourself. But basically you can put a matrix which is going to be just a list of four things and you're going to have your your vector here which is a list of two things I wrote a function that will multiply matrices and lit and vectors together for you and uh, this matrix power function is just exponentiation by squaring using matrices that's all it is so if we want the x Fibonacci number what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a to the x minus 1 power and multiply it by v our vector up here and then we're just gonna take the top element out of V. So let's test it out. If we do it, there we get 1. That's the second Fibonacci number. The third one should be 2, right? There, we get it. If we want the 37th Fibonacci number, there it is. Now, obviously, we could calculate the 37th Fibonacci number pretty easily on our own, but if we do bigger ones, let's say we're going to 1,000. I'm going to move this over so that we have a little more room on our command prompt over here. Um, oops, I forgot to save. There we go. Thousandth Fibonacci number is pretty big. Still feasible to calculate without it, but let's say we want the 100,000th. With matrix exponentiation, that was instant. Look at how big that is. We want the millionth. It's dealing with huge numbers, so it's going to slow down a little bit, but it's on, it doesn't have to do nearly as much work as the other algorithm would. Look, it my screen doesn't even go all the way up. I can't see the whole thing, it's so big. So this is very powerful and um, you can do it with a lot more things. I'm gonna upload more videos with examples of using matrix, matrix exponentiation to calculate uh, some really cool stuff. And so I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thanks for watching.